Paul? Jefferson Parish is still under a curfew as progress is slowly being made to restore electricity and sewer service to homes and businesses. It has been a long week for hundreds of thousands of people without power in JP. And joining us now on Zoom is Parish President Cynthia Lee Shank. Cynthia, thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely, thank you for having me. So why don't you just give us a quick rundown of what y'all are dealing with in JP right now? Well, look, you know, our, our main concern are a couple things, um, but you know, as the electricity gets restored, and I, I do want to say, um, Entergy, I, I believe, is doing everything they can, but double check the maps. You know, um, some neighborhoods are showing green, but I think you need somebody on the ground to go check your house if you're outside making um, a decision on whether or not to come back or not. Uh, my understanding is sometimes it goes green and then it goes out. And so just just do a double check um, on the Entergy map. So we're working really hard to get the water and the sewer systems up to speed and stronger. As we know, more people are going to want to come back in the next few days. Uh, we're making a lot of headway on that. We're still under a boil water advisory, though, um, because the pressure is not where we want it to be. Um, I'm hoping we get both of our uh, water treatment plants online. One was online yesterday with electrical power. Um, we're hoping the other one comes online today. And then also, we have over 500 lift stations with our sewer system that is dependent on electricity. So um, again, we're we're putting out portable pumps and we're putting out vacuum trucks, but those are the necessities of the electricity is making sure the nursing homes, the assisted living, and then the infrastructure and in our water and sewer start getting power and we start stabilizing those systems. But we have made contact with <clears throat> all the assisted living and nursing homes in the past couple of days. They're on generator power. If their residents are still here, we've been going and topping the fuel for them. And then yesterday was the bright day that I had when I was able to visit the convention center in New Orleans. So for that middle ground of people who don't need hospital care and don't need to be in hospitals, but yet really can't take care of themselves and cannot handle a bus ride to Bastrop, Louisiana, it was so wonderful to see um, the state, Louisiana Department of Health and Health and Human Services at the federal level, met a lot of people from out of town with the disaster medical assistance teams, uh, be at the convention center. So I know our most vulnerable citizens are taken care of right, right close to home. So that was a uh, made me very happy yeah. to see that resource in place. And Cynthia, I know you're making progress with the utilities out there, but you know, so many of those areas outside of the levee protection, Lower Lafitte and Grand Isle are just dealing with some of the worst devastation they've ever seen. What, what's your yeah. communication like uh, with some of the local leaders down there? That is a completely different story. Those are people who lost everything. I mean, electricity is not their issue. They lost all of their possessions. They lost their home, their 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 whole life you know if you if you think of your home as your life you know we're lucky that we didn't have a lot of fatalities but to lose every possession you know that you have is is just really tough you know our concentration on those areas is to make sure our first responders have what they need and that really is you know god forbid there's a fire down there are we able to um you know fight that fire are we able to provide um emergency response and so for lafitte and grand isle it's to try to get stable teams out there to start the, the most basic part of rebuilding a community is almost like first responder um, stability, right? And yeah. so that's what our, you know, we're trying to get a bridge to the people in Barataria to make that crossover. That was just terrible that again, we lost the use of that bridge through um, a loose vessel. And we are gonna come back at that later. And really that is a problem um, we've been dealing with every time and that is something that did not need to happen if people would do the right thing and the responsible thing ahead of time, tie down those vessels so we don't have these runaway vessels taking out our infrastructure. That's the last thing these people need is not having transportation to their home. That that did not need to happen. So again, um, post storm, we're gonna have to go revisit a lot of these issues and really get some enforcement on some of these you know, what I hate, you know, bad operators, so to speak. And it, I know it's still early, but is there any sort of estimated time on, on how long it's going to take to rebuild some of these areas, Grand Isle or Lower Lafitte? Yeah, we, um, Entergy did not give us estimates. They're still doing their damage assessments. So um, I know, you know, the other day I was told that um, Atmos Gas had to turn on the gas, uh, the pipe to Lafitte because it took on too much water. So, I mean, they're, we're looking at kind of like, you know, especially from the gas perspective, they told me like a total rebuild of Lafitte, um, Grand Isle as well. I mean, there was a natural gas smell. I think we got that under control. So, I mean, the dangers post-storm are very real. It, it's not, I know people want to go see their homes, but it is hazardous out there, especially in Lafitte and Grand Isle areas um, to be out there. And look, you know, um, our chief, our fire chiefs are saying we've, we've had hundreds of calls too 
in Upper Jefferson as well for carbon monoxide issues. So many people are using their generators. We lost more people post-storm than we did during the storm to have the, the three fatalities for carbon monoxide poisoning, you know, absolutely did not need to happen. That was a post-storm death and we don't want any more of those. So please, we need to make sure everybody understands the proper use of their generator. So we have no more fatalities from this storm. Yeah, I mean, that that is the tragedy. It is so important to keep that 20 plus feet away from the house as well as not under the house or any windows there. Um, as far as crime is concerned, I know that Sheriff Joe Lapinto said that looting has not been widespread and there are plenty of deputies to respond to things. But of course, we had that unfortunate situation where there was a shooting in a gas line your reaction to, to that and then of course your reaction to hearing that there was an arrest being made, that was made well you know the days post storm that was my concern when you have a breakdown of a society like we do and all of our systems broken you you just want to make sure that there's law and order that's why i issued the curfew for the sheriff's office for our first responders so they have full use of the streets we don't have people on the streets that are able to watch their property and our first responders our sheriff's office the louisiana national guard has helped not only with food distribution but with supplementing the security. I wanted our citizens out of town to know that their property was safe. We're asking them to stay away those couple days. Um, they needed to know their property was safe. And, you know, I just want to commend our sheriff's office, uh, Sheriff Lapinto and his, his troops and his team, as well as the National Guard who helped them. I mean, there is, they did have that other, you know, incident at the gas station, which was a terrible tragedy. There was a fatality, but overall, um, we have not had an outbreak of lawlessness or anything like that because the sheriff had what he need. He had the support of the Louisiana National Guard as well. And that would have been another tragedy on top of everything that we're doing. And then, the, you know, I say the double whammy is because our refineries got hit. So we had this fuel situation that, you know, we didn't have after Katrina. Um, that was very difficult. But when you get hit at the source for the gas, that's the reason. It wasn't necessarily issues with the, that gas station or their employees not being there or a generator not being on. We got hit at the source with eight refineries that provide two thirds of the gas for Louisiana, 13% um, for the United States. We got hit right there at our gas source. And that was very, very difficult for us. And it's still not solved. I know at the highest level, we were saying this is an immediate need for us. I'm told that you know other supplies from outside, other inventory, from outside the state is coming in. But again, to be at this, to be hit at the source at our refineries that depend on electricity, and it takes five to seven days for a refinery to get up to full speed. Um, that was just another layer on top of everything that complicated things with those lines at the gas station. I know a lot of our viewers are watching, um, a lot of our viewers have evacuated and they're watching us online and they're curious on when it's a good time to come back to JP. Obviously it's different depending on where you're at. Grand Isle is gonna be a lot longer, Lower Feet is gonna be a lot longer. Uh, but you know, some of these other areas, maybe utilities will be coming back sooner rather than later. What would you say to folks who are, are gone right now and wondering when they should come back? Well, we've been, struggling and working very hard and every day we've been making you know my teams know that when the electricity comes back on i wanted the water and sewer systems to be strengthened um i was very fortunate to say schools did not are not starting next week so that was not going to bring in the masses of people the public school system jefferson parish public school system um you know that they have dr gray i think he was sending drones out to all of his buildings i mean the buildings that they have to assess and understanding what schools can provide they just needed more time as well as the Catholic school system. So school is not bringing you back. My job is to give you the full information. My best friend, you know, they're coming in, they're looking at their house and they're going back out again, mm -hmm. you know, because they just, you know, if you have elderly people in your family, um, if you cannot live in the heat, um, these, my job is to give you the information about what the status is like here uh, and, you know, for you to make that call. But if you can afford to be out, you know, obviously hotel lodging is very expensive yeah. for people. They have financial concerns. So that is a that is a situation that has to be made by yeah. each individual family. Well, I, Every day we make progress. I'm I will sorry, say that. I'm Every sorry, day we make I'm progress. I'm sorry to cut you off, Cynthia. They're telling me to wrap you, but thank you so much for your information. Thank you. Thank you for having me.